Thanks for everybody for being here today for what is a very special moment for our entire franchise. Um, I just want to put a little context without going through all the numbers because you have them. I'm sure many of you have your own stories, but some of you may not remember how we started at this point. 2009, week two, we're playing the Houston Texans. Late in the third quarter, Craig Hentrick hits his 912th and final punt as a tight. He's not able to go forward. It's kind of a crushing moment for our organization because he had been with us since 1998, and he was the best situational punter in the NFL. So good at what he did, he was a weapon. And we certainly never took for granted what we had in Craig Hendrick. I do want to say, because he would want me to, that there was one more punt in that game from Rob Baronis. It went for 40 yards with no return, so his net is 40 yards and his gross is 40 yards. He'd be very pleased to have us note that today. It took us a few weeks to find the full-time replacement for Craig Hentrick, and we didn't know that it would work out the way that it did, but it worked out pretty marvelously. Uh, the Denver Broncos put Brett Kern on waivers, and we claimed him the next day. He got into town at midweek. He punted against Jacksonville the following Sunday, four punts, three inside the 20, and we said, you know, this might just work. And it went for over 200 games after that, where he became a three-time Pro Bowler, the best situational punter in the NFL, and he became a weapon. But if you have a chance to see what this room looks like with former teammates, with current players and coaches, with people who work in the building overall who just valued him, I think you understand that to our organization, Brett Kern is someone who meant a great deal more than just being the best situational punter in the NFL. Uh, there's no way we could have found anybody better to replace Craig Hentrick, and uh, Ryan Stonehouse has a lot of work to do as he builds on his young career if he wants to fully be someone who is referred to in the terms that Brett Kern is today. It's an honor and a privilege to present you with one of the great titans, Brett Kern. I appreciate the introduction, Mike. Um, that's, uh, I think Stonehouse will be just fine. <laughs> uh, he's already smashing records, and I'm, I'm happy for him. And I hope that um, I could, the time that I was with him, I hope that I can give him what Craig gave to me. So um, without further ado, I've practiced this in front of a mirror, uh, in front of a TV screen. I have it timed. It should be about 13 minutes, 48 seconds. If I go under, you're welcome. If I go over, uh, Braves, you can't find me. So I'll just start with, uh, first I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, it's good to see a lot of old friends that I've had the privilege of getting to know over my 13 years here in this building. I also want to recognize the many individuals who can't be here today that have helped contribute uh, to my family and I on this 15-year journey. For some, I, for some, I've been blessed to spend a lot of time through conversations, sharing a meal, uh, time on the practice field, um, the list could go on and on. Others, it might just be a friendly hello, goodbye, or a thank you for making the fourth down scramble for breakfast. Morgan, they still got that going? Still going, good. Whatever it is, know that you've made an impact on my life and know that you've helped contribute to everything leading up to this day. The main reason why I wanted to have this time together today was to allow me to publicly thank those that have had a huge impact on my career. For timing purposes, I'm unable to list all the individuals that I'd like to, but please know if your name is not mentioned that I'm still extremely grateful for you. Awards and accolades are nice to have. Records are great, even though they are meant to be broken. But more importantly, my hope is that I made an impact on every person that I've met over the years in a positive way, knowing how important my family is to me and my faith. First, um, I want to thank God. Over the years, my wife, Tiffany, has sent uh, a ton of Bible verses to me. Uh, the one that I've always gravitated to is Psalms uh, 40, verse 4 through 5, and it says this, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to turn to those aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you. 
none can compare to you. Where do I speak and tell of your deeds that they would be too many to declare? I believe that everything happens for a reason. Most of the time, I have no idea why, but I know God does. I put my trust in him, and he has guided me through the mountaintops of this league, and he's also guided me through the valleys of this league. Never did, a thing, never did I think a day like today would happen, but I can't ignore his guidance and his fingerprints through this whole process, and for that, I'm extremely blessed and thankful. To my parents, I can't thank you enough for the love and support over the years. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for allowing me to kick footballs over the house, and then to why progress to kicking over the power lines in our front yard. Thank you for taking me to camps across the Northeast, or across the Northeast, which helped me get my name out. When at a time, there was no such thing as Twitter, Instagram, what are all that stuff. There was no way to promote yourself. For understanding when I did not want to play soccer anymore and allow me to try football. The unwavering support you have shown me has been a true gift, and thank you. I want to thank all the families and people that have diligently prayed for my family and I throughout my career. The Allens, the Locks, the Kellys, the Tassies, the Collins, Katie Cecil, and so many more. I greatly appreciate your prayers and your faithful support. I want to thank my agent, Gil Scott. Thank you for the many conversations over the years of talking me off the ledge of whether I was going to get cut or not. Thank you for getting me that deal that was done in a hotel room on a mirror over FaceTime. I can't thank you enough for representing my family, for myself, and for my whole career. Thank you to Anthony Champ Kelly. You were one of the only scouts that talked and interviewed me in between the Hula Bowl and the East-West Shrine game. You got to know me, and at a time when I was down and wondered if I could make it in the NFL, you encouraged me, you gave me hope, and that meant everything to me. Not only do I value you as a professional, but you were one of my most loyal friends. Thank you. To Coach Shanahan, Mike that is, not Kyle. Thank you for taking a chance on a skinny, I would like to say athletic looking, but probably not, undrafted, no combine invite, punter out of the University of Toledo. Thank you for sticking with me through the growing pains of my rookie year and giving me a chance to fulfill my dream of playing in the NFL. I couldn't have asked for a better first coach in the league. <laughs> Thank you to Lake Dawson for calling me on the golf course to tell me that I was a Titan. Despite being 200 through four, thinking I could break the course record, uh, it was one of the best phone calls I could have ever gotten. Thank you to Mr. Bud Adams, Miss Amy, and the Titans organization group. I know in some organizations, a player might never see the owner or the ownership group that much. Miss Amy, I'm thankful that you have taken the time to not only invest in the infrastructure here, but I'm, also, uh, but I'm also thankful for the time that you spend with the people in the building as well. Anytime we would cross paths, it always came with a smile, encouraging words, and how was your family doing? Thank you to Mike Reinfeld, Rustin Webster, John Robinson, each one of you had the belief and trust in me to represent this organization, the city, and the fans. With the confidence you had in me, it allowed me to grow as a player and a person while I was here. Over that time, I felt like I became the best I could be. I owe that in part to your encouragement and your faith in me. To Coach Fisher, Coach Munchak, Coach Wisenhunt, Coach Malarkey, Coach Rabel, uh, thank you. Good to see you, Buck. <laughs> Thank you for believing in me and trusting, trusting in me to hopefully be what you thought was a weapon every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and a rare Saturday. Each one of you had very high expectations and standards for me that pushed me to become the best I could be. Rabes, <coughs> Rabes thought and probably still thinks that every one of my punts should go out at the five yard line and never hit a touchback. I knew that was impossible, yet I still feel like I could do it because he had the confidence in me to do it. Thank you for sticking with me through the highs and the lows of every season and allowing me to be your punter. Thank you to Coach Lowry, who took a just cut, nervous wreck, metal basket case punter, and through some time instilled the confidence in me to become a consistent directional punter. You told me if I want to play a long time in this league, that I need to punt it here, here, and definitely not here. You told me to, to find a type of punt that I could use at all times to be consistent and a weapon. Would you, Mike, would you call that punt? What's the punt? The knuckleball? Yeah. Thank you to Nate Katzer, who took what Coach Lowry instilled and fine-tuned it. The box that you set up with cones 10 yards apart on the sidelines and at the bottom of the numbers seemed crazy to me at the time. 
This drill resulted in me trying to hit a 45 to 55 yard punt outside the numbers with bonus points for a ball going out of bounds. Yet, I still, I still don't understand the whole point system. Bo's laughing, you get it. All that to say, you challenged me to go nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10, and being challenged like that took me to the next level. Thank you to Steve Hoffman for allowing me to take a break from the Nate Katzer box drill. You helped me tremendously by giving me the confidence to just go hit my best punt. You never had a stopwatch. You never really wanted to see how far, how far the ball went. You just told me that if I hit my best punt, I'd be the best in the league. You kept things light and would tell jokes literally right before punt or field goal period. One would think that this is probably not the best coaching tactic, but for me it helped. Your sense of humor didn't stop at just the specialists. After home games, my kids would often get upset at you when you'd bring an empty pizza box up empty pizza box up and joke as a joke in the parking lot, thinking that they were getting a fresh slice of pizza. You guys remember that? Yeah. I'll always be grateful for our seasons together and being able to celebrate my first Pro Bowl with you. To Craig Ackerman, I appreciate you and thank you for keeping the ball rolling. Sometimes when you have a coaching change, it can rattle you pretty hard. The pressure to perform for someone new and to gain their trust can take a lot out of you mentally and physically. You just let me be me. I appreciate that. You allowed me to be a leader on the punt team. You always encouraged me regardless of the punt outcome. With that encouragement, I felt like I could help contribute to this team winning. Thank you to the equipment staff, Joey boys back there, uh, Matt, Joey, Jerome, there's so many of you guys. Uh, this took some time, but I did some rough math and I believe you caught roughly 35,000 punts. You cut, uh, you cut pockets out of 100 pairs of pants. Joey, you helped you helped find a very particular kicking sock and a long sleeve shirt. I'm glad you're done with that task now. Uh, the list could go on and on. It sounds crazy and, um, and maybe, not maybe not that important to some, but know that without your effort and your caring, these little details allowed me to be at my best. Those that know me well know how important my mental state is during the football season. The guys in the back taking care of all my needs, or as I like to think, requests. Yeah allowed me to solely focus on just playing footballs. Thank you to the operations staff, Brent, Chris, Luke, Nick. Y'all just made coming to work fun. It's a great, it's, uh, it was great to have a place to go, just hang out, talk, uh, and take your mind off football. Hopefully, you are and will always be proud of my dissertation to Miss Amy on every road trip hotel and why we stay there. Love you guys. Thumbs up, good. There are a ton of, uh, there are a ton of staff members I could thank. There are so many memories that I'm very thankful for, like Nate, hanging out with my family and I at the Pro Bowl, riding rides together. Donald, where you at, Donald? There you are. Thank you for taking all those pictures that will last a lifetime, that will always ignite memories of those pictures. Where's Todd? Is Taki here? No? He's probably stretching somebody. Tak, uh, thanks for stretching me who knows how many times and uh, for always having a smile on your face. Even when Bo pops out of the cardboard box, and scares the crap out of him in training camp. I could go on and on for a lot of you that are here today, a ton of memories. Um, and I'm just extremely grateful for those memories over the years. Mitch, thank you for always having your office door open to chat about life and God. Thank you for pushing me spiritually and putting me in positions to help grow my faith even when I gave you the look. I'd like to thank Craig Hendrick you were such a professional when I came on the scene here. You took me under your wing and encouraged me along the way. You were a 17 year vet and didn't have to give me the time or day, but you were kind to me. You answered all my questions and you gave me pointers that I used my entire career. You never doubted me and in fact, passed the torch onto me in such a humble way. I will be forever grateful for your friendship and the way you mentored me. Thank you to my teammates over the years, guys like Rob Baronis, Kenny Amato, who were always there for me when I first became a Titan, pushing me the best I could be. Guys like Morgan, Ben, Taylor, The King, KB, D Morg, Luke, Rack, Lumberjack. Thank you guys for being great teammates over the years. I always value your opinion. I enjoyed our conversations over the years that we played together. I'm thankful that football was just a tool that brought us together. Ryan Suckup, Bo Brinkley, Tripod, you guys are like family to me. I'm forever grateful for the memories we share on and off the field, from a game-winning kick at the Arrowhead 
on the arrowhead in zero degree weather. Mike, you maybe do like a, how you announce that, maybe later? Later, okay. Uh, celebrating, Ryan, your record of most consecutive kicks in a row, under 50 yards. Bo, being able to help baptize you in Sylacauga, Alabama, on the 17th hole at Farm Links. And yes, how could I forget my golf video during training camp that will only remain on my phone. I could list a lot more teammates, and I owe a thank you to, but I know y'all want to go home for dinner tonight, and the boys and I, we got a tea time here quickly approaching. Thank you to the fans. There are not many words that can, that can describe my thankfulness for the love and support through the years y'all have shown my family and I. The number of fans that have told me they waited to get a drink or buy a snack until fourth down was over means the world to me. Your compliments over the years honestly fueled me to be the best I could be. I didn't want to let any of you down. Thank you for letting me represent you on the field and allowing this city to be our home. Thank you to my sister, <clears throat> Leanne, and my brother-in-law, Chris, for your love and support over the years, even though I know Chris, deep down you're still a Giants fan. To Eric and Tracy, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, thank you for your support as well through the years. From going to games to helping with the kids, rain or shine, or just spending away game weekends with Tiff, I'm grateful for you both. I wish you were able to come to more games because most of the games you attended, we won. You all had an outstanding record. To my in-laws, Ron and Lynn, your love and support goes beyond football. Thank you for the times of staying at home to watch our girls or a sick child. Thank you for your hearts of help and generosity over the last 15 years. To my little colonels that aren't so little anymore, um, all, you know, all you've known is daddy playing football. You've literally grown up at Nissan Stadium or LP Field. Bryce, the memories that we share together at times, I'll never forget. Never did I think you'd be old enough to help at training camp or that I'd be able to take you into a Pro Bowl locker room and just hang out. And Ellen Quinn, thank you for always encouraging me after games, whether good or bad. I always look forward to your hugs after games. It made the wins a little bit better, and it made the losses not hurt so much. Thank you for being so invested in how I did and for cheering me on. I'm going to miss you girls wearing your number six gear so proudly and trying to always make it on that Jumbotron. I look forward, I look forward to being able to spend more time with all three of you and watching you as you continue to grow. Lastly, <clears throat> to my wife, Tiffany. Ah, I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> Thank you for being my support, my encourager, and my one consistent through the ups and downs of the last 15 seasons. We've come a long way together in this journey. <laughs> From chasing punts around at the freezing cold South Toledo Golf Dome after it had closed at 9 p.m hoping and preparing for an NFL workout to being the first one I hugged after a Super Bowl loss. You've been with me every step of the way, and uh, I know you roll your eyes with this, but I tell people this all the time, that without you, your love and your support, there's no way I'm playing in this league for 15 years. I love you, and thank you. Who got through it? So um, I appreciate it. Every one of you in this room, you all are here for a reason. Um, and you all, you all, you've all contributed to making this last 15 years really fun, so I appreciate it. Take questions. Take questions. All right. <laughs> when you talk about your appreciation for this town, you know, a lot of times putters and kickers can be overlooked by fans, but a lot of times here the question was, were you the best player on the team? I mean, that's how much you were appreciated. What does it mean to you? Um, I mean, I kind of, I laughed, uh, you know, just to think of a punter as, you know, being the best player on the team. But um, it was also a compliment just because I just wanted to be um, as, consi as consistent as I could be. Um, just helping the team with field position. Uh, I mean, you don't get a lot of cracks sometimes during a game. You could get two punts. Uh, there were some years where it was more than two punts, right? Um, but you want to make them the best that you can make them. Um, and so I just did my best. And if that meant people thought I was the best on the team, then, then great. Uh, and if, uh, if not, then it, it didn't matter. I was just going to keep doing my job and doing what I was supposed to do. Craig, you mentioned uh, 
Super Bowl loss, but they obviously didn't quite get there with the Titans. But that run in 2019, what do you remember about that, getting to the AFC Championship game and, you know, starting it off by blowing up the Death Star up in New England? Yeah, that was uh, – that's, that's definitely a moment um, I'll never forget. You know, you kind of have those moments along the way in your career of certain punts, you know, field goals made, uh, all that kind of stuff where you can celebrate. Um, but that punt was uh, – that's pretty special. And then for the next play to be a pick and be done. Um, I mean, he went, you know, Tom obviously went and won a Super Bowl with Ryan the next year. <laughs> so it all worked out, right? Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, that run was, that run was really, really special. And, um, you know, to get that far, uh, to come that close, um, there's just something about them Chiefs, you know, uh, that year and obviously, you know, this year in Philly, finishing there. Um, but uh, that is definitely, Celebrating in the locker room afterwards, um, you know, having that mentality of, I mean, nobody really expects you to win uh, or to go up to New England and win and go to Baltimore and win. No offense, Morgan. Um, but, you know, it was, uh, that was a really special run. What was in your mind, Brett, I guess, when you were released by Denver coming here? Uh, and did you ever dream it would have worked out like it did? Uh, I was honestly a little relieved at the time um, just because it was, uh, it was tough. It was a tough situation there. Um, and at the time, Bryce was six weeks old. And so to get cut at that time, you know, to go home and have to tell your wife, you know, I just got released. Uh, obviously, Bryce being the age that he was, um, it was pretty tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, to get picked up off waivers, pretty rare, right? Uh, for a specialist, especially to get picked up kind of in the middle of the season uh, when I did. Uh, and so I'm just extremely thankful um, for that opportunity, because I never, I never would have dreamed, I never would imagine that that moment of kind of frustration and anger. I had a lot of emotions when I got cut to be here, uh, and then to have the the career that I was I was blessed to have here is uh, um, it's pretty special, really special. Other than golf, what's next? Uh, I mean, we got basketball games, basketball games. Golf with Bryce, uh, a lot more walks with the wife. Uh, there's just a lot more to, to catch up on. And, uh, you know, they've sacrificed a lot too over the years with, you know, from the training camps to, you know, all the road trips and uh, me trying to separate the stress of football uh, before I came home and, and not to, you know, put it on them or anything like that. So um, I'm just looking at more family time, a little more travel time. Uh, and then we'll just we'll just kind of see what uh, what's next. But I'm excited for for this new chapter. How long the new excuse to take kids to Disney? Thankfully, we did Disney three times, and it was for free. So uh, we will we will probably pass on the Disney train uh, because they've been spoiled with how they did Disney. And for me to do it like that way again, I might have to come out of retirement and uh, to pay for that trip. So how long did it take you to come to this decision that this was it and it was time to retire? Um, I've been praying about it for a while. Uh, obviously, you know, talking to my wife about it, just kind of back and forth. And I didn't want to really make a rash decision um, on whether to be done or not. Um, but I felt uh, just my time in Philly, um, just being away from them. I mean, those, those, the four right there are the, you know, most important people to me. And so to be away from them, not being able to take them to school, pick them up, um, you know, even just going out for coffee with my wife, right? It's something that doesn't seem like much, but you kind of take it for granted when you're in a totally different city and you can't do that stuff anymore. Um, so being away from them, just kind of put into perspective of if I do want to play somewhere this year, what it would look like. Um, you know, and I also wanted to, I had many conversations with Craig about, uh, you know, your body. Um, you know, sometimes you feel like you can still play, uh, but then what does that do into your body that you don't necessarily know? And then you feel the re repercussions, uh, you know, a couple years down the line. So. Uh, there's a lot that went into it, but I knew, um, you know, when I came home from getting these braces on, because uh, my teeth are jacked up, that, uh, you know, I knew that uh, it was time to it was time to be done, and um, yeah, it was it was a pretty easy decision for me. And one of the select few that experienced the tough times and then helped contribute to this division titles that you guys won. What kind of accomplishment, sense of accomplishment, does that give you? Um, yeah, I mean, just to be a part of it with the guys, uh, you know, to have those memories with guys forever, right? Um, when you come back here for alumni or any type of events that you have, you always have those stories of, 
you know, the, that 2019 run or, uh, you know, breaking that in 2017, you know, breaking that playoff drought and um, kind of the turnaround that we had because, you know, 14 and 15 were, they were, they were pretty rough. And so to make that turnaround that quick, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, just to be a part of it. Honestly, whatever role I had in it, I just, um, I'm just thankful to, to just be a part of it with those guys and have those memories forever. I hate to put you on the spot. F a few years ago, standing out, I think it was a training camp, I asked you about all the training camp kickers slash punters that came through. I thought it was one of the most impressive party tricks I ever saw. You nailed almost every one of them. Would you be willing to try to do that again? Uh, it's on an Excel, Excel spreadsheet at home. Um, just as far as all the guys that I've held for and, you know, I just kind of jot notes down um, with how they like the ball held, all, all those little details I just kind of keep track of. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. And there's, you know, obviously with Ryan being in the room um, and some other guys that I've held for. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, the list is good. I, I've, I've had a lot of good guys that I've been able to, to hold for. And between Rob, Rob really taught me a lot. Um, you know, holding is not just holding. You just don't just catch it and put it down and hope for the best, right? Um, so he taught me a lot, and I felt like going from him to, you know, when Ryan came in, um, you know, Ryan taught me stuff as well. And, uh, you know, those two guys are, um, you know, to have those guys for so long to be able to hold from was uh, really special. How, uh, how early in the week would you have checked the weather apps and uh, what was maybe the worst uh, conditions you ever put it in? Uh, well, when the schedule came out, um, I would type in as many as I could. So, whenever, so what, when the schedule come out, like May or whatever that is, I would I would type in the first probably six road trips uh, back then, and then uh, just so they were in there, I wouldn't forget about it. And then when the season started, I would type in all the uh, all the cities that we played in, and then you kind of I just kind of kept track of where we were playing and all that kind of stuff. And then when we played at home. Um, I usually checked on Wednesdays. Um, so worst, worst. Mm, there's been some dandies. There's been some cold games. That Kansas City game when it was zero was cold, but there was no wind. Uh, actually, my first game when I was in Philly, we played at Chicago. I felt like I probably should have waited a week because the next game was in Dallas. Uh, but Chicago was, I think that was the weekend that it was really, really cold here. Uh, but it was, I mean, it was zero with 30 mile an hour winds and, um, you know, some rain games and, and all that stuff, but it's uh, all those are memories to, to have. I know you got a little taste of it last year, but what do you think fall is going to be like for you without football? Are you going to watch? Are you going uh, to A lot less away? stress. I know that uh, would be nice. But, you know, I'll, I'll keep tabs on um, obviously how the Titans are doing. And just, you know, I saw Big Jeff leaving the parking lot and uh, just keeping up with the guys that, um, you know, I love and consider, consider brothers just to see how they're doing. Um, I just saw, you know, KB the other day and just chatting and, and checking up and, um, you know, following guy, you know, AJ up in Philly and um, some of the guys that I've just really enjoyed playing with and just seeing how they're doing.